don't move, in just a few moments, we will be live in the studio with legendary OG, B-Boy Popper, and event producer, Speedy D. Yeah, you know it, so stick around, because this is quick to rap, rap, rap. <laughs> Welcome, one and all. I am your host, Rockefeller, and he is... Quickstep, a.k.a. DJ KS360. And we are Quick to Rock, a hip-hop variety talk show providing a glance into the underground artists who are keeping the legacy of hip-hop and street and club culture alive. This show is possible through the Creators Rebuild New York program in conjunction with BronxNet TV. And you already know, we rep the underground kings and queens who are Quick to Rock nonstop from the block, coming at you from around the way to be heard around the world. Yes, and today we have none other than the original B-Boy who was down with the 3D crew. What? 3 d -O. In the building, always in the place to be, Speedy D. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. So happy to finally have you in the studio Welcome with brother. us. Thank you, my brother. All music. right. Uh, so it's a pleasure you know, seeing you guys repping, all the time. You've been repping since day one. Yeah, since absolutely. day one. I mean, uh, some of y'all don't know this, but he's the one who appears in all those, like, clips and footage. I mean, I think there was one about of you. Uh, with Bronx River, another one. I, I, Quick and I were watching the Max Roach documentary. Mm -hmm. You show up in there too, That's so right. he's definitely somebody who's been like, you know, always, always in the mix. So, okay. lot, lots of props Thank to you, you and you so lots much, of guys. respect. And, and just so you know what that is, the one in Planet Rock, the dude in red and the white hat, yeah, popping and walking the dog that mm -hmm. they used to do. That's Speedy D right there. Yeah, Thank you guys. definitely. Thank so, you. I mean, how did you get down with 3D Crew? Well, back when when we uh, when I was introduced to the dance, it was pretty much you know a, a '70s generation coming into the '80s generation that was, you know, out there doing their thing already. Right. I just happened to, you know, uh, to kind of see it and just kind of learn about it okay. from my local neighborhood. It was happening right outside. Right outside. Or in school was it happening in school. Well, too? it was happening for me. I saw it outside the first time. My mother sent me to a store, okay. um, and I seen. You know, the kids breaking, it was just like kind of a little footwork freeze. That okay. was it. Okay. You know, and I didn't pay too much my mind to it, but it was uh, another kid that was kind of like, uh, you know, the form of uh, the dance that we call it at the time is electric boogie. A boogie, yes, you know? yes. Okay. So and then that you that kind of gravitated that. exactly. Wow, wow, wow. There were people like that I've heard of throughout the neighborhood that had made a name. In the streets was uh, Freeze, ah. Fable, okay. Wiggles, okay. you know, that whole scene. So once I've gotten uh, good enough to actually be part of a crew, my first crew was the 3D crew. Uh, they were, were from your neighborhood? They right on the same street. Really? And what street? What street are we talking? Andrews Avenue on Burnside Where Avenue. Where so That's right, 180 of straight wow. out the, okay. not far from the uh, Cool Herc. Right, right up the right street, Sedgwick, yeah, the birthplace yeah. of hip hop. Wow! Oh, yeah. we got this picture of you. Oh my Look gosh! At, wow! How old were you there? Eight, ten? Dude, if I tell <laughs> you, I was thirteen oh years my old God. there. Wow! And you had the letters on your hat. That's the popping yeah. police right there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> No, that hat. I have yeah, a hat like, like that. You're doing it wrong. You're under arrest. Come here. So, so, the, so I have the, a hat like that right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because that was more or less the style of yeah, it. You yeah. had to create your own image. Yes. And you, you know, you had to True. be different than everybody else, no matter, you know, what dance form you were you're involved in. <laughs> I love and it. Uh, for me, it was always my complexion. You okay. know, I, everybody thinks I was white, okay, okay. but not knowing I was Latino. Yeah, Puerto Ricans you know come in all shades and shapes so, and colors. So, that outfit, they thought you were part of the village. People. Well, almost close. But <laughs> no. what I want to say to that portion is, is that th there's a Mexican hat there. Ah, so what okay, happened okay. was, is everybody was like uh, white boy speedy. Oh. You know, okay. and, 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 and I was struggling with that yeah. in the neighborhood and, and 
Because everybody, it. when the name started spreading, I started becoming, you know, noticeable throughout the neighborhoods, yeah. dancing. You know, um, I, I wanted people to acknowledge me as a Latino. That's why I came up with the name Speedy. Like Speedy Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I remember the Mexican that cartoon. Rap. Yeah. Right. So I threw the, the image with the... The Mexican hat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so all that for nothing because when it, I, I started moving forward, they still said, oh, you know, white boy Speedy? Ay, Dios so Dios. I, I, I wow. could never get rid of the stigma of being white. Well, I never called you that. I, when I first saw you, you were popping. And yeah. we're going to roll a clip because we have this very historic footage of you that I, I've seen so many times. And in case people have seen it and not understand who the person is in the red Adidas suit, <laughs> it's Speedy D. Can we roll this clip for a moment? Oh, <laughs> chewing gum when he's dancing. <laughs> Always. <Okay. laughs> that is his I think that's what me and Wiggles have in common. <laughs> oh, it's not when we're chewing. Like, yeah. it's casual, because it's casual. Yeah. You're like, wow, what? Regular day, regular day. <laughs> what was the story behind that? Who was the other dancer? So the other dancer was another new member that came into the crew. Um, his name was Chino. Right. But the crew was started by a brother uh, called E.T. and Kenny. Okay. So it was just three of us. That's why we were called the 3D crew oh, okay. at the time. Um, um, so we had a manager called Gordy, okay. and Gordy was the manager to Africa Islam. Oh, wow. So we were all from the same neighborhood, and that's how I got put Connected. on in that perspective because, you know, you know, it just took off in there. Anytime Islam did something, the 3D crew was always part of that. Oh, oh look at the photo. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was my uh, first talent show in Roosevelt High School. Oh, you went to Roosevelt. Yes. Oh, man. And that it's happened. funny because 20 years later, I went back there and started doing workshop classes. Oh, man. That's a great, like, yeah. return. return. It's like the give back. Who's the gentleman dancing with that's you? That's E.T. That's the actual oh, guy to, the that started, that founded the, wow. the crew. And he was awesome. He was way better e. than me. Yeah. With the white gloves. You got e. the white gloves. Yeah. And then, wow. you know, and his image of popping was, like, the movie, the the the, the e. character e. from E. T. Okay, so he was taking on that character. Yeah, I see y'all got the white gloves. That's, always, that's cool. always. And so this gentleman is not the guy that shows up in the video. No, no, that's a different person. So, so going back to that footage from Bronx River, what happened? We had a show that day. Okay. And he wasn't able to make it. Okay. So I had to substitute with the newer member. Oh, okay, so I came okay. up with a little choreography. Said this is what we could do, but to find out that. We were performing, first of all, I'd never been to Rox River until that night. Seriously? Seriously. Wow. And then not to mention that we opened up for New Edition when they first came out with Candy Girl. Oh, and they I performed at Rox River. Girl. Yeah. Wow. So that clip was like the right moment, the right time. Really and the person who filmed that was uh, Michael Holman. Oh, this guy. Wow. Michael wow. Holman was around recruiting um, mm -hmm. for New York mem City. Yeah, for New York City Breakers was, at yeah. that time. Yeah. You were always at the right place Places at the, the right, right time. time. I was That's everywhere. Amazing. Every yeah. school jam, you name it. Every house party. We used to just go around <laughs> <laughs> looking, crashing, crashing, crashing parties. Oh, you're listening <laughs> for the music. Oh, there's a party uh, yeah, over there. That's it. Oh, my God. Yeah. How funny. Yeah. Man, uh, we have a photo also of you with um, oh my gosh. <laughs> United States Breakers. Let us know what, right. how did this come together. So... You, you were yeah. a popper and then you got into breaking. I got to hear this. Well, well, kind of, sort of, because I had foundation time, but I wasn't really, like, into breaking because okay. of the popping. Okay. Um, most of us were like that, um, like Freeze, mm -hmm. Wiggles, sure. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we had, you know, I've mm -hmm. always um, managed to have that because of my brother over the, at the end, track two. Okay. Track two is the, my forefather. He's the All one the who kind of showed right. me and took me under the wing, showed me that breaking aspect, just foundation stuff, real simple. And I've always practiced it, but my main strong point was the electric boogie at the time. Okay. Yeah. And then everything happened, uh, time went on. You know, I was part of New York City Breakers, the floor master to New York City Breakers at nice. one point. Nice. And then there's another story behind that as well. So when the whole B Street thing took off and I wasn't able to be part of that. Oh, um, wait, wait, you gotta oh. tell us a little bit about that because <laughs> Beat Street was this like, 
roundup of anybody and everybody who was mm. popping and breaking at the time, rapping, mm. graffiti. It was almost like this big collection, and everybody heard about the audition. Did you go to the audition? Did you hear about it? So what happened was I did hear the audition. Okay. I went to the audition. Okay. And this is a story I told on another program. You know, I am... Chino uh, was a big fan of mine, and I was a big fan of Chino at okay. the Floor Masters. So anytime they had a, uh, a, a battle oh, with that. Rocksteady, okay. they needed a popper uh, okay. because they had the Wiggles and the Fables in the corner. So they would bring bring me along to to, to battle that aspect of it. And he uh, brought me onto the audition with Harry Belafonte. And unfortunately, when they got into the final rehearsals for the movies, um, I was replaced with Mr. Wave. I see. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes that happens in audition. I, I, I can honestly say I barely made any audition I went to. Mm. It was either too short or not black enough or not that white enough or it was, uh, you know, hard. Yeah. It's hard and it's something that if you're an aspiring dancer, you have to have thick skin oh, because you will be rejected. But that was the thing. So there I go talking about being struggling, being white and not being not uh, acknowledged being Latinos. Right. In this case, it was all Latinos, practically. It was I was too Latino. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Not enough white. Right, right. So the what the story was is the behind that was there was too many Latinos in the group. They wanted to mix it around. Right, and have so, an African American yeah. represent. I and, hear that, and, and that so, happens. Yeah. you know. I mean, you yeah. know, we keep it moving. You kept it moving. Always. Um, and we want to take a quick break, but we're gonna come back to ask you more because oh, you know says your story is it's, it's a lot to unpack in just like two segments. But yeah. please come back. We're gonna be breaking down more of Speedy D's story. You mentioned E.T., man. This, go, this e. goes out to Brother E.T. Brother E.T., yes. Oh, oh, what? the shirt man I love the shirt we I got shirt back. for you I definitely want a shirt we are back and we're still hanging out with the illustrious <laughs> uh, OG Speedy, Speedy D, D who was yeah, definitely repping in the 80s but you were bringing it into the 90s too mm -hmm. that's right so we ran into you at the Palladium with Mighty Mike and you hooked us up with St. Mark's and Ferretta's remember that yeah. yes along yes. with Roger Marks. G Yes. St. Mark's was crazy. Yes, because back when, there weren't too many people breaking at the time because mm -hmm. I remember, um, you know, from the 80s to the 90s, that whole thing that happened with the B Street and all that kind of faded away in a sense. It did. But in the 90s, I kind of like, you know, I was caught in a, 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 a drug um, struggle. Okay. Yeah, a lot of 80s. us were. I late was 80s. too. Yes. <laughs> but the 90s, I kind of came back and kind of recovered in that sense. Congratulations. Thank God. Congratulations. You know, yep. and that's where it kind of, started building up again so okay. I was a place in Howl Club where I was recovering at that I you know they had a big center space, there space yeah. and started practice they threw parties there they did. and then I branched out then I ran into Miguelito at um, Webster Hall which he took me to the Palladium oh mm -hmm. it's right there they're closed yeah so he was telling me the dance is over here so I was kind of like breaking and kind of like really house house, house was because great. it yep. was big at that time so it I was, was like you know yeah and I kind of was doing the mixing the two, yes. basic foundation stuff, I nothing saw, serious, nothing all that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got with you guys at that at that time where ninety four ninety four that yeah. when we started getting into Ferretta's, you yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying that we right. started developing uh, a crew where yep. we were practicing, and this man here drilled me to death. And so, me too. <laughs> and you know? anybody who was signed up, it was boot camp, yeah. <laughs> breaking Bring boot camp, camp Bring weight loss step. program. <laughs> <laughs> it was all of the above. But and, yeah, and you were there. You were yeah, hanging. we were there with you guys, you and, and I I wouldn't be the breaker that I am if it wasn't for you guys because oh, you know. You guys taught me about Thanks. choreography. You kind of yeah. taught me how to nail certain moves, yeah. how to expand it. Um, yeah, we did school shows. Yeah. We did a couple of school oh, shows. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that was all part of the process, you know, but the breaking aspect started really kicking in when I was with you guys. Yeah. Okay. yeah For me, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. my, my birth of breaking uh -huh. where I just did full fresh breaking. Yeah. And it was with you guys, and I want to thank you for that. Oh, you know, we and I've always it. shared that story with everybody to let them know that if it wasn't for you guys, kind of encouraging me and building me to be the breaker 
yeah, that, you know, yeah. That well, I wanted a, to be at one point. <laughs> for us, that's a success case story yeah, because right. we were trying to preserve the dance but embrace new people and new styles. Um, you did theater too? Yeah. You, you did a, what's that show? Man Dance. Man Dance. You, you were able to delve into other lanes. So that you're yeah. kind of a, a success story for that's us right. too. Oh, gosh. You know, but then you started producing your own events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got to uh, talk about that. Proud, yep, proud to know that you were also expanding into offering competitions and other people platforms. So tell us a little bit about like the other two so, events that uh, you gave us flyers for. It was like the oh. early 2000s, right? Yeah, yeah. So that just for the birth of that, I just want to give a shout out to Brother London. Yeah. Um, you know, when we, uh, it, it happened in Ferretta at the same time that we were all there, that the New York City Breakers got together, yeah. kind of was reuni reunited next door. Yes. And I kind of ran into them. They started seeing me breaking. And they were like, yo, we got we to gotta regroup. And yeah. that's when I kind of went with New York City Breakers. Yes, yes. You know, and follow that, that dream that I I never had with them in the beginning right, right. and kind of relived that dream with them now uh, in, in that moment. Yeah. And uh, we had a, got an apartment, we turned it into a dance studio, nice. we started practicing and, you know, ran into a brother named Speedy Legs, was doing events in Miami for a pro -am, pro -am. with oh, yeah. That's right. Yep. Shout and, out to Speedy uh, Legs. you know, we started this thing called Battle of the Burrows. One thing yes. led to another and, it was awesome. you know, London, you know, you know, did his thing and went off, and he he, he started going on with his life. I just continued to move you forward did. with it. You did. And yep. uh, came up with a couple of other events, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, we got we saw. Check out this photo. Oh, yes, yes. That's the ESPN moment right there. Wait, wait. It's ESPN? Yes, yeah. ESPN. That's the not first. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't run by that. Break ESPN. <laughs> All right. So, so there, that moment there was the first time by breaking ever. Connected what? with sports. No, not with only sports, sports but yeah. it was filmed live. Right, right. A battle was filmed live on ESPN. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. What year was that? Oh, I got to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a flyer, and I think it's on the flyer. So. I think it's probably yeah, on the flyer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's great. But Already. that's the first time Already. it's ever been, you know, and I, that was like a... a, 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 a like a, a moment of breaking through. History. Yeah. It was a landmark yeah. moment. Right. Landmark a lot of moment people were like, wow, like, you know, breaking is finally becoming more official, more established, where you have something that's like a big network uh, investing in it. Um, and then tell us about some of the other. You you moved to Florida, too. You did some work down yeah. there. Yeah, so I went out there. I opened up a, a B-Boy Academy out there in Florida. Nice. B-Boy Academy. For, yeah. Okay. And started doing shows with the dancers, doing a bunch of stuff. Um, and then the recession hit down there and then uh, it, it pushed okay, me back okay. to New York. But you keep on coming through, man, because yeah. now you're back and you have yeah. an event coming up called Battle, Battle for New York. Battle for New York. We heard Battle the music. New York. Heard the, and the hat. And the, and the hat. hat. I don't know if you can <laughs> see it. Tell us about that. Tell us you know about saying? that. So this event, um, since I've been back, I, I went to breaking events. Mm -hmm. In New York City or and around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In New York and just general tapping with everybody again. And, yeah seeing what the scene was like and, 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 and to me it was like the breaking aspect is great and everything but it, just, it was missing something. Mm -hmm. It was definitely missing something that and I said though this is not what I did events for you know right. just to do a breaking battle for four five six hours no right. it was missing the culture. The culture mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. know where's my DJ where's my MC where's this where's the networking, where's the unification the in this? The mingling, the social the, aspect. You know, the atmosphere. The atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere. Yeah. So yeah. I, uh, I decided to, to kind of do this event on behalf of the 90 generations, the 70s, 80s, and 90s generation, and let them know that these people in the 2000s that are here now and then, there's more to this than just a simple breaking competition. Right, right, right. You know, and, and that's what I want. I definitely want to bring this culture back. So, so it's a one-day event, and you've got film, you've got rap battle, you've got graffiti. Oh, graffiti, live graffiti battles. Yeah, Elk Pack, <laughs> you're back at the Elk Pack. Where it first started, where we first started our first event. That's our 170th yes. um, In the on Bronx. the four train. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, like, tying all the pieces together. And it, I'm, you know, I'm. We're involved. Yes, Quick I'm so I glad you, you guys are involved. Full circle is gonna be supporting. Yes, yes. And we're happy that you're back. We expect this to also happen as an annual event. So we're thinking 2025, 2026, um, in a way that is going to extend not only to the youth but also to the elders and create that dialogue. So what you're doing is right. 
right at the time that we need it most because yeah, the Olympics is that. coming. Yeah, that's and it. we know that that's every four years. But as Quick says, hip hop is every day. You yes. know, we don't need four years to you know come together. So this is great, and yeah, and, we and it's this is this is about New York for New York. This mm. has nothing to do with mm. Speedy at all. Speedy is just the, the vehicle to say, okay, I have right a here. vision, this is what will work. And then here it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The versus the world. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's Bronx, what we yeah. need to put New York back in the map in that sense because it's happening elsewhere and right. other people are doing cultural stuff, but it's not happening here. Right, right. No, but we, we you know. don't lose hope and don't yeah. you lose hope because <laughs> exactly. we're working. It's just sometimes we don't get the visibility, which is why we wanted you on the show right. so that people can see and be inspired, you know? Like, well, Absolutely. Speedy's doing it, then all hope is not that's, lost. That's my goal. We appreciate your mm -hmm. con contributions and that you're still willing to give and, 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 and work. And how can we follow you? How can I know how to? I have your number. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Your yeah. Number. But yeah. how can they follow you? Well, they can they can hit me up on um, again uh, Instagram. What's the uh, Instagram? Battle for NYC. Okay. On Instagram, with also the same information for Facebook. Facebook. Website. Uh, the uh, website is um, battleforNYC.com. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can get your tickets for the event there as well. You hit me up with messages. And I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm so open to building with everybody and anybody nice, nice. just to maintain what we have to offer. Yeah, so it doesn't you know get lost. Man. Exactly. I hear that. We do have a gentleman in the studio. We'd like to oh, ask yes. Vice to come on over Vice, here. Come Please on. put your kazals on come because on. we don't. Ah, uh, surprise, we don't surprise. See. Yes, he's in the studio and he's helped Quick Step um, with the Behind the Group Flyers. That's right. Yes. And so this is this a my designer. Best and and Steve's right best friend. All right. Can stand right here, my brother. Right. True artist right this here. Is, you don't know about him. Soundview. This is Soundview yeah, right Exactly. Here. Straight Bronx. You know, when I was coming up, we ran into each other. Uh, I think he was going to art and design. I think you were going to art and design. I went to Richmond. Richmond. I'm sorry. Oh, and I'm so sorry. So sorry. I was yeah, going to Cathedral Richmond. High School. <laughs> but he was in Richmond, yes. and it was amazing. Wow. Also see you still hanging with like family and I keep them involved. I keep them always involved. Like and, and, and he started with me. He was part of the US breaking crew, right? Yeah. And with us, and you're nice okay, break breakers, so man. I'm, I recruit everybody and anybody right. and, uh, when it's when it's needed. Right, and when you they're know? talented, I mean, yeah, he's still especially. got the gift, and he sings. And he sings. Oh Singer, my gosh. photographer, graphic designer, dancer, <laughs> coño, I don't know, <laughs> architect, <laughs> right? Oh, wait, hustle too? You do hustle? No, I'm saying he's a hustler. What kind of hustle? We're not talking about that here. Not that hustle. Oh, not the street hustle. Okay, not not the street. No, no, not that life. Not that life. Not that life. But shout out to. Stratford, yeah. <laughs> but um, we are gonna be coming right back with another segment, so don't go too far. Quick, take us out with some of the goodness. Yes, and sir. Battle for New York. Hey. hey. Hey y'all, this is Rockefeller with Quick to Rock, and we are on the Upper East Side along the Museum Mile, Fifth Avenue, what? We are back with Works in Process at the Guggenheim Museum, and this time we're bringing the Behind the Group party. And not only the party, there's gonna be a performance, there's gonna be a dance contest, and of course, all the different styles that the DJs DJ KS360, also known as Quickstep, and DJ DP1. They're going to be playing the best joints for everybody to get down. So come with me and let's get to know some of the judges, the DJ, of course, the illustrious legendary dancers. Come on, let's go. Let's get quick to rock and let's get behind the groove. And so what are you planning tonight? What's going to happen? What's going to be different about this party? Well, tonight uh, we have a surprise performance, maybe. Um, you get to see that in the clips. But definitely we're going to have an homage to the lockers. And so we have a performance by the Full Circle Soldiers and the Lock-In Department is what we call it. And uh, we also have um, special blends and edits in mind to get the people going with not just the classics that they're listening to, but a different take on the classics. And uh, you know, when we go back and forth between myself and DJ DP1, who's my other DJ for Behind the Groove, we feed off of one another. It's like two kids in the sandbox. And he plays something, I'm like, oh, oh, where are you doing that? All right, check this out. <laughs> And I love then, that, I love that. Yeah, we edit it, we do acapellas and beats, and we do other beats that, you know, go with another classic. People are like, oh, I never heard those two records together. <laughs> So 
So Frank, fresh Frank is in the house at the Guggenheim Museum for a second time, bro. We had this audition to see if we can get some lockers that could pop a little bit, and you've been choreographing for them. A big portion of what they're gonna perform tonight has been choreographed by you. So how does it feel? We're working with new people and, and be at the Guggenheim, and it's your choreography. Coming in with us, um, they're, they're special. They're special because they are willing to learn. They're very humble. You know, which is hard to find nowadays, and and they they put the grind in. And tonight, right, you're gonna be one of the secret judges. It will be fun to watch people hopefully let go. Yeah, that's really what I'm looking for, people to be able to let go um, and not show off though. Not show off. I'm not looking for show off, I'm looking for showing me them. What's up, what's up? Heavy hitter DP1, AKA the Blessing Handler from Brooklyn, New York City, here with my family, my sister, the queen herself, Rockefeller, Full Circle Productions, Full Circle Soldiers. Hey, hey, hey. so let us know how it's been from 2009 to this moment right here, pushing out dance music for dancers at a party. Listen, I mean, it's it's been amazing. Uh, many, many years full of ups and downs, learning from all the lessons um, that I've been facing, all the challenges, all the, all the, 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 the trials and tribulations, right. but that's where the growth and the process is found. So I embrace it all. And I've made, I mean, the family's just got bigger and stronger. And like what we're doing, I mean, it's groundbreaking. Crazy. And you can always follow us on social media accounts like DJKS360, La Rockefeller. Stay in the loop with what's coming up with us because we are always cooking something up in this hip hop kitchen. Always brewing something. Is it over? Unfortunately, yes, for this episode. Pero la fiesta sigue. The party keeps going. You we know. We want to thank the legendary Speedy D and Vice for coming through today. Yes. Listen, y'all. Yes, yes. They were in the studio. And you know, we're going to keep things going. Of course, of course. We have to thank our BronxNet TV and Creatives Rebuild New York for helping us show the world how the Bronx and New York City based artists always keep it going, keep it moving. That's right. And in the meantime, stay creative and connected to the underground. See you next time. This is Quick to Rock. Peace. Peace and break beats. What? Let's go.